This is afterglow. This is kind of the time when, you know, right after service, you know, you get a chance to kind of wind down and maybe think about what was said or talk about what was taught and get a chance to let the Spirit of God kind of bring to your mind remembrances of things that maybe, maybe that were um, objectionable or questionable or kind of I know I got my toes here. <laughs> it's like, what am I doing with my bare feet? That we're kind of like, we're on holy ground. No? <laughs> you know, but it's afterglow. Afterglow just simply is like that time where you just kind of go, <sighs> oh. And I think about, you know, the teaching that was given, you know, just getting done with sharing from, from uh, Romans. And, I know it's hard sometimes for people to understand when you're living in a practical world, how do you deal with the impracticalities of a spiritual dimension? In other words, how do you deal with this thing that, you know, you, you, you go and teach on talking about knowing God and, you know, people think, well, yeah, I, I believe that I know God. Or you talk about, you know, hearing God speak and then they usually kind of say, well, you don't mean that really. And I go, yeah, I do. And people want to kind of like sometimes, you know, get into the nitty gritty. And so afterglow is kind of like what we're going to do. We're going to get into the nitty gritty, you know, just say, hey, you know, this is what it is. <laughs> it doesn't get any more plain than this. I mean, I try to, I try to relax and be less animated, I think, in video church. But one of the things that I've discovered, and that's why we started this afterglow, is because in Vidigal Church, there's an expectation of a Bible study. There's this qualification that everyone has that they want to put in front of a pastor or a teacher or an elder or a deacon or whoever whoever's in front of you sharing the Word of God. There's this uh, kind of like expectation that, you know, the person's got to be holy, first of all, because somehow, whether you admit it or not, you got this idea that, you know, the person's got to be holy. Because it's kind of like left over from some kind of religious expression somewhere. Some movie you've seen or some something you've heard, you know. And somehow you figure, well, you know, I want somebody that's better than I am to teach me what I am, you know, or to help me, you know. And it's like, well, no, that's not how it works. But, okay. Or like there's this expectation that the person that's teaching, you know, knows it all. You know, and that, that's a big one. <laughs> Trust me, there ain't no pastor out there that knows it all. And a matter of fact, most of the guys I know that are teaching the Word of God are shaking in their booties when someone asks some questions or, you know, gets to them. Because a lot of these guys that are very good in the pulpit are very good in the pulpit. Now, you know, they're fun to be around, sort of, you know, outside the pulpit. Most of them that I meet are pretty carnal. I mean, the, the truth is they... They can talk a good talk, you know, and they, they try to walk the walk. I mean, they, they'll tell you straight up, they're sinners just like you and me. But at the same time, you know, they're, they're probably a little more susceptible to failing than most because they're being attacked. So, you know, they, they flip out and they get flippant, you know, and they kind of screw up, you know, behind the scenes that you don't often see, you know. That's when sometimes God gets a bad rap, you know, because then the message, it's almost as though it's true that Christians are hypocrites. Well, in some ways, yeah, because a Christian hypocrite is simply someone who's being led by the Spirit of God that at times they're walking in the Spirit and the rest of the time they're kind of like dealing with it like you and I. So, in Afterglow, you know, we kind of want to get down to, you know, real, you know, talk and real walk and, you know, kind of say, hey, yeah, you know, I mean, whatever the message is, let's talk about it, you know, and see where we're coming from, you know, is it just uh, an inspirational thing that, you know, is meant to inspire, or is it kind of like real, is it, is it, do you say what you mean, I mean, is that honestly true, some of the things that you said, I mean, we'll talk about what I mean, and um, that's what Afterglow is going to be, it's just simply going, hey, you know, let's have a cup of coffee, let's talk about it, you know, let's, let's see if we're on the same page, and uh, for me, my life in Vidivo is my life, I mean, it's what I do 
24-7. When I sleep, when I wake up, when I drink, when I'm going about, when I'm going visiting other churches, my mind's thinking of Vidivo and those things that I can share and relate and talk about Jesus to you and to people about, you know, on the internet. And that's kind of what I do. It's just uh, the way I'm made. You know, it's like, well, you know, some people, they like to go play football, you know, baseball, and they get out and they do their thing, you know, and they, they enjoy that kind of, um, I don't know, lifestyle, I guess. But I'm more, I don't know, some people say Jewish than that or more of a Bible student or Bible scholar that I'm really into the Word. I like Bible studies. I like setting up and developing and, you know, personifying the Word of God, like in pictures or in audio or in visual or teaching or sharing Jesus in some ways. Because, you see, what happens to me is that as I talk about God, I come alive. I am quickened. I, I literally become quick. And it is a King James word that simply means to become alive. It's, uh, it's quickened. <laughs> it's just a good word to describe it. And that's why I wanted to get an afterglow was to maybe explain how you can be, shoop, you know, full of spirit of God and then the next minute, shoop, you know, like emptied out and how sometimes that difference is what we see and we call hypocrisy in some ways. But if the person is honest, the teacher, then it, he can share that like maybe in an afterglow like this or maybe in some kind of a way of being real at some point in time where he acts less like a pastor and man in charge and a jerk or more like a person and a human being whom God uses at some point in time to share the word of God. You know, that there's no real big difference between, you know, standing up and sharing the Bible and, you know, talking to him, you know, when you're eating, you know, and for me, I'm kind of the same way, you know, sort of, I get a little more animated in video church because again, there's that expectation and you can sense it and the Holy Spirit kind of tries to inspire us maybe to, you know, tone down a little but. It's also, we feel and know God inside, so you get kind of wound up, you know, and it's kind of like that light going on and off. It's like, you know, it's like, man, when the light's on, you're like, when it's off, you're, you know. And um, so after go, I wanted to talk with you about just these things that, you know, we were talking about, you know, about called to be a son of God, you know, because that's what we're called to be. I mean, if anything, the Bible, all the way through the Bible, you know, as we were you know, looking at Romans, Romans is kind of, it's compressed. So that's why this afterglow is good, because it's so, it's so intense. There's just little, little phrases that are thrown in there that Paul expected the people to know what they were talking about. And I know you don't, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways and things that are said in there that are very deep Jewish thought, you know, process going on. And it's taking, and it's going to take a long time to get through that, you know, to kind of like get a handle on it, because he means what he says. It says what he means, but he's also using a lot of things that just string together in thought process that's like flows from, you know, the throne of God, so to speak, and comes out and we all go, huh? Can you make that simple? And maybe after go will help that, you know? And so today I just wanted to talk about really just kind of like, you know, chilling, you know, like if you don't get it, it's okay. In other words, like the idea behind sharing Vidivos or Vidivo Church for now because we started Vidivo Ministry as a a way to share devotionals that were simplified, that made it easy to understand that you can hear God speak. Because that's what my life is about. That I heard God speak and from that moment on I told everybody, hey you can hear God speak, you know. And you should. And you know, if you don't <laughs> you know, that's okay. But no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't settle for less. In other words, don't you want the best truck? I mean, if you're a truck driver, don't you want the best Harley or don't you want the best or don't you want to go, you know, climb the mountain and get to the top? You know, I mean, you know, you can put it in any way you want to look at it, but don't you want everything that you're supposed to have? I mean, that's the way I was taught was that get it while you can and get all you can and, you know, do what you can. And so, really, in Afterglow, I just want to talk about, you know, being real about it. You know, you know, it's true. You should hear God speak. But if you don't, it's okay. You know, it's like, I get it. You know, I, I get how, in some ways, you don't really want to hear God speak. Or sometimes you want to get away with what you're doing. You know, I mean, there's both ends. The women usually are the kind of people that 
they want to hear God speak, but they don't want to do what God says to do. I mean, they want to be loved on. And I don't blame a woman for that. Men, they don't want to hear God speak because they don't want to do what God says to do either. But a woman does it for a different reason, because God usually blesses women in a certain way, because they're already serving in many ways the way that God wants men to serve, you know, to become servants. Women already know how to do that. I mean, they, they've been given this unique ability to bear life, to give life, and to be a part of that living process of nurturing life and growing life. And then they get married to a man who's just, you know, some child, you know, and they really don't get quite what they bargained for. And then they have to learn to grow up with that, you know, and live with that and deal with that, you know. And it's the way most men are. I mean, you know, they don't grow up until they get old. And that's why in Jewish culture, you know, you find Joseph, you know, not around when Jesus was born because Joseph was old. He was an old man and married a young woman. I mean, that's the way it works, Jewish culture. And I would say that's a good idea. Because, frankly, I married a woman that's very young. I mean, she's the same age as me, but her life experiences, her her intellect, her intelligence, her experiences in life were all limited so that her spiritual age, emotional age, and physical age were all probably 10 years or more younger than what she is. And so she has... When I met her, she had lots of issues, and now she's flourished into the woman she is today. Now, I could not have done that as a younger man. As an older man, I could. I could not have nurtured her. I could not have been a part of her life because we would have just butted heads and, you know, we'd have both split. But that's kind of what God does with us because we're younger and he's older and he's married to us, you know. And so he's trying to get us to a place of knowing him. He's trying to get us to understand him better. You're in this eternal contract, so to speak, that you're married to God. And that God wants you to kind of like own up to your part of the marriage, but he understands when you don't. And if you've been married, you understand when other parties of your marriage don't, you know. And that's sometimes the way it works, you know, in marriage. And it's not right, you know. I'll be honest with you, it's not fair, you know. I mean, it's not equal, and there's nothing in marriage that's equal. I mean, people say, well, you know, there's equality. No, there's not. There's one person serving, the other person getting served, one way or the other. You're either serving the person, and it's not equal service, but, you know, you're either serving the person, the person's taking it, and then that, hopefully, when that person's done serving, the other person serves the other person. That's hopefully the way it works, because it's supposed to be tripartite. God is supposed to inspire each servant to be serving Jesus inside of the other person. So, like, if I'm serving you, if you were my wife, you know, I'd be serving you because I see Jesus in you, and I'd be serving the Lord, and you just happen to get a free ride. That's grace. By the mercy of God, you know, he gives you grace so that you could be part of that participation in what God is doing. See how that works? Really? No? Okay, well, that's just a side subject. You know, I always get off on tangents whenever I'm in a afterglow because it's like, well, I'll just run off into the never world, you know, and talk about marriage, you know, talk about divorce, talk about, you know, unpardonable sin, talk about, you know, all kinds of things. So. But no, we just wanted to, you know, in this afterglow, kind of bring it up about, you know, how it's okay if you don't hear from God. You know, you're still saved. Don't worry. You know, just keep going. The important part is just keep going, okay? In other words, God is amazing, first of all. He's just going to blow your mind. The more you give thanks or be thankful, the more he'll make himself known. If you see a miracle, thank him for it, you know, and acknowledge it. Tell someone. And as you do that, he'll keep doing it. If you don't, he won't. He's just, he's got bigger heart than you do, but he's also got bigger feelings. And the only way I can explain it is to say that if you've ever imagined something so tender that you could just, you know, it so, you know, pulls back, that's kind of what God does when sin is involved. You know, it kind of pulls back because it hurts him. You know, it hurts him to see you in the condition that you're in when you're in sin. So there's a tenderness to God that's just amazing. There's a beauty, a, a holiness. There's something magnificently intimate. And that's kind of what afterglow's more about. We want to, we want to get into that intimacy with God. You know, maybe, maybe be able to share some things, some tips, you know, along the way that that we didn't talk about, like in the Bible study. Like, you know, when it says to be called a son of God, God already called you a son or called you a daughter. He loves you. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you just gotta get that. You know, you gotta, you gotta get in here and just go. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, and you got to let it inside. You got to kind of like, you know, oogle it, you know. You got to kind of like schmuffle it, you know, and kind of like roll around in it, you know, and kind of like enjoy it. You got to just kind of like, oh, my God, I like being a Christian. Woo-hoo! I like being saved. You got to. You gotta find that place, really, in your relationship. That that's why we have Vidivo, you know, and that's why Vidivo Church is. You gotta maybe after glow, I'll help you to get there. But you know, if you ever have a problem with that, call me. But you know, or talk to me, you know, or watch one of these. But you know, either way, get a hold of me. I mean, I'll I come. I'll live with you. You know, if I have to. You know, God don't you don't want me to live with you. <laughs> I've done it for people, but you know, well, but um, you know, I mean, I'll I'll. I'll Tell you how it works, you know, and we'll spend the day, you know, we'll go see how God works that way, you know. You'll laugh. <laughs> Cause that's how God is. He, he likes you, you know what I mean? He likes you enough that he loves you. And he loves you so much that he likes you. And because he likes and loves you, he calls you his son and daughter. Yeah, really. I mean, he, he does so because Jesus died already. I mean, let's be clear. Because Jesus did it, God does it, you know. It's kind of nice way to swap that out, you know what I mean? He loves you. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta live a life like that though. You see, your life has to be kind of like Google it and Google it, you know, like, oh boy, I'm loved. And then you fulfilled the word. You fulfilled everything God wants to do in your life. Really, seriously. He's not asking you to, God will never ask you to go out and, you know, like, start a church or build a wall or build a steeple or work at your job or provide for your kids or, any of those things. And God doesn't ask you to do that. You just do that because you do that. God's already said he'd take care of that. You know, he said he'd take care of the bear, the birds in the air and the sparrows and the fawns and the dogs and the frogs and the cockroaches. I mean, and he does a good job with the cockroaches. <laughs> but if he cares about the cockroaches, he cares about you too. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of funny, you know, when we think about how we think we're so important and we're so much doing something when really we're just kind of occupying time until we realize how much God is doing it. And we kind of give like, oh, you really did say you'd take care of it. Yeah. You just go along with flow and be easier. You just get to where you can just kind of like afterglow or glow. You know, just kind of like, hey, let's go see what God's doing. Let's go check it out. You know, and you go run over there and see what God's doing, you know, or or like when you apply for a job, you go, hey, let's go check out what God might provide. You know, let's, let's see if God will give a better job. Or maybe God wants me to step down. Wouldn't that be cool if God wanted me to step down from my position so that I have more time at home, less responsibility, less stress, you know, that I could have more time to be obsessed with spending time with God. Wow. Imagine that. Spending less time in the world and more time with the Lord. I don't know. That's what I do. <laughs> you see, I, I spent a lot of time, you know, different times in my life that when I was disabled and had health problems, you know, I didn't have a choice. But when I got healthy in some ways, you know, that I had a choice. And then now I have a choice because the consequences are what I pay. If I do this, there's a consequence. So can I pay the consequence? Well, okay, you know, then I go do it. And so when I went to work, I went to work like in the absolute hardest kind of field of work that man, I could possibly imagine for somebody in my condition. And I succeeded. And I went... Well, this is fun. <laughs> I got paid big bucks for it. I was like, oh, and had fun with it. So I rolled around and enjoyed it. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, it's great. At the time, I was writing my book, so it was kind of nice. You know, it was kind of like it gave me a great chance to get my book written, you know, and uh, distribute it to some of the, you know, to some people. But anyways, my point is this. In the Bible study, you know, we're, we're talking about Romans, and we were focused in on called of God, and we were focused in on some very intense things, you know, because that's what the study is about, intensity. But afterwards, you kind of got to, you got to let it filter into your mind, you know, and you got to let it go into your heart, and you got to kind of like, okay, that was intense, you know, and you go, mm, yeah. And if you got some points out of it that you can think about, then you can, you can talk to Jesus and go, now, Lord, I don't know about this, like, you know, son of God thing, you know. What do you call me? You know, do you call me your son or do you call me like, you know, am I really like out in the world? And what if I don't, you know, like hear his voice, you know, hear your voice or what if I'm not? And just be like a Tuvia, you know, like in Fiddler on the Roof. If you've ever seen the movie Fiddler on the Roof, go see the part. Just 
Google it on the internet or something, you know, just eat some little part of it, you know. Don't watch the whole movie, it's not that good. I mean, it's good, but, you know, you might not like not make a cup of tea. But the fact of being able to just talk out loud and act like there's somebody there, because there is, is what it is all about, you know. I mean, that's what God's about. Yeah, seriously. Having the ability to talk to him and then the shocking thing that's going to happen to you, the more you keep talking to him, one day, oh, and that's what happens. You know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Then he talks back and you go, oops, now what do I do? You're screwed. <laughs> and that's why we call this the afterglow because, uh, hey, baby, you know, I'm just bringing you to the place where finally you get on with it and you go with him, you know, and figure out what he wants you to do, you know. Because I'll tell you, it's easy to be a Christian when God doesn't talk to you. Boy, is it really confusing once God starts to talk to you. Uh-oh. Because you can never deny it. You see, that's what the, what happens is that once God has spoken to you, oh, wow, now what do I do? And Jacob <clears throat> found himself like that at Peniel, or Peniel, or Pen, Peniel, Peniel, yeah, Peniel, because a-E-O-U, Pena. And um, I was still thinking about the word Pena. But Jacob found himself at a place in time and struggles, you know, and issues and things that were going on that he's trying to manipulate his life, you know, and work it out and make it work for him in his own best interest, you know. And that's the way most of us are, like Jacob. You know, he's trying to figure it all out, you know. And then he goes to sleep and he has a dream and he sees, you know, angels descending and descending, you know. And when he wakes up, he realizes, wow. I didn't know God was here. And he makes an altar there, which is kind of stupid, but, you know, <laughs> some places, you know, we do that. You know, we think, oh, wow, this place must be holy because that's when I saw God. Well, no, but that's okay. You know, I mean, we, we are superstitious in some ways with our faith. You know, a lot of people are like that. You know, that's why they build altars and churches and, you know, have little trinkets and dinkets and special days and holy days and go to church when they think they can hear God better. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, me personally, I hear God just fine in the bathroom. <laughs> you know, and that's what that's what it's all about. You know, the point is your relationship is personal, and you should be um, getting to know Him a little better than what you've been doing. You know, and if that's you know, if you're satisfied where you're at and you don't want to grow anymore, then don't. I mean, you're going to find I'm the first person to agree with you. You come into me for counseling anytime. You know, I mean, you can. You know, you can say, hey, you know what? I don't want this. I mean, if you tell me straight up like what you don't want, I'll say, okay, well, this is what's going to happen. And here's your circumstance. Here's your box. And here's what happens, you know, and this is where the box goes, you know, and the box fits here. And this is how you will live your life because God will still use you. He'll still bless you. He'll still encourage you. He'll still, you know, do his thing. You'll still be saved, but this is what's going to happen to you, you know, and I'll tell you what's going to happen, you know, depending on what the Holy Spirit tells me at the time. Oh, well, well. But, you know, I mean, that's that's your choice. There are actions and reactions. And that's why Jesus was so accepted by the common people was because he just simply said, look, blessed are the poor spirit of the kingdom of God because they literally were more interested in it than that. The people of the world were interested in other things, but he, he said things that were direct. Reap what you sow. They understood that. Um, action, reaction. Hypo hypocrisy, reality. Um you know, say what you mean. Yes is yes, no is no. Don't lie. Don't don't tell, you know, fibs. Don't exaggerate. Don't qualify. You know, just live. Enjoy. Your father cares for you. He loves you. Just bask in it. You know, be part of it. And that's kind of what I think really is the hardest thing to do when you're religiously trained is that if you're not a Jesus freak like me, then... You think you got to go to church or you think you got to volunteer here or do that there and do this here and do that everywhere, you know, and you got all these rules and regulations that, you know, I mean, if it makes you feel good, do it. If it don't, don't do it. I mean, it's part of that feeling thing, but it's also part of that faith thing that if you know you're saved and you know that you're only saved because Jesus died for you, then the grace that you're given isn't so that you can, you know, like feel better about yourself by doing things 
because that just works. But really, it's about getting to know God better. And for me, the way I get to know God more intimate is like video church, you know, like I said, you know, it's an afterglow. So, you know, when I'm teaching, you know, I open up that Bible, you know, and that's why I don't bring Bible here. It's like, I'd go nuts, you know, Woo! you know, let's, let's teach, let's look at this, oh, look at that. You know, I start telling you all about it. Oh, look what I read. You know, I can tell you about what I read today, tomorrow, you know, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> seriously, I can just go off. <laughs> We, we're flying. Where'd the spirit go? Boom, right here inside my heart, and now it's beating. But uh, no, seriously, you know, I mean, that's what I do. I, I'm a man of the word. You know, I enjoy the word of God. I'm, a, a, I call myself a missionary at large, but really, I'm just a person with Jesus. You know, I'm just a guy that loves talking about Jesus, loves sharing the word of God because. When I do, it's like then, I, like I said, when I started, I'm quickened, I'm made alive, and it's just I see Jesus in it. I see Jesus doing things and speaking to me and things and sharing with me things. And my mind is seeing things both physically here, but then also spiritually other places. And I just, man, I can't wait to get out of here. You know, it's like there's so much more going on. You know, so much more to do. You know, and so I. I, in my relate, in my personal relationship, that's what I, I do. That's how I express myself with Jesus. You know, I, I, my time, the time I spend with the Lord is, you know, yeah, I take a bath, you know, and listen. To, but most of the time I'm, I'm sharing what I can because I enjoy it. Because I see God in it. I, God speaks to me in it. He, sh he does it in lots of ways. So I like to find out more and more ways he does. You know, I mean, everywhere. You know, I mean, he doesn't, you know, seem to limit himself to reveal himself to me. But maybe for you, you know, I mean, that's, you know, what we're trying to share is you might want to, you know, just stick with your job or stick with your, you know, raising kids or being in your position, whatever it may be, you know. And so if you came to counseling for me, I'd say, yeah, you know, it's how it works. You know, here's this and here's that, you know. It's kind of like, you know, like people talk about how, you know, a lot of Christians won't talk about divorce. I'll talk about everything, man. I I know that there's like, you know, sexual perversion going on by pastors and preachers and teachers and all this stuff that, you know, <clears throat> <clears throat> that I teach on, you know, and try to say, hey, look, you know, I know what's going on because, you know, they're men involved and they're women involved and both are perverts, you know, I mean, they got to learn how to be godly and they don't know how to be godly because they're perverts. They're unholy people that are trying to be holy, you know, and so you have to kind of like and explain it to them, you know, and so you teach on that, you know, and that's what I like doing. <laughs> that's what I like sharing is Jesus in the midst of it. That's why, you know, I'm probably the only person who tells people when they're married that, you know, it's not a dual thing. It's not a marriage contract between a man and a woman. You know, it's a marriage contract between a man, a woman, and God. You know, because Jesus is in you. Jesus is in me. Jesus is in the three of us. You know, literally, or God is. The Godhead dwells in Jesus bodily. So that means that there's three people here. You know, I mean, and so... You know, I, I kind of involve that, and that means once I start explaining what that means, people kind of go, really? Ooh. Kind of like what's happened when Jesus tried to explain divorce. They didn't get it. I mean, because, you know, now we've got people running around saying, oh, you're divorced, you can't be in ministry. Excuse me? I think ministry has to do with what God says, not what man says, you know. So I don't know where people go with that, you know. So it's like, hey, you know. I don't know where they come off with some of this stuff, but anyways, talk about divorce some other time. But I just wanted to share that about Romans, because I know in my mind, I got to thinking, you know, when I got done, it was like, eh, I wonder if somebody out there is going to be kind of burned out or bummed out about that. You know, it's like maybe they they're going to try hard, you know, and make themselves do things or hear things or say things or be things that they aren't, you know, and. That's kind of why an afterglow, I just wanted to kind of explain and say, hey, you know, it's it's peace. It's love. And baby, is it joy. Because <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I mean, you don't know this, but I spend every day, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, doing this um, in some way. You know, if it's not in front of the camera, then it's behind the camera, fixing things and making things and doing things. But until I fall asleep or I'm exhausted, nonstop, you know, I, I look at like kind of getting groomed, you know, cleaned up as a waste of time. <laughs> I do. I mean, I am not a Metro man. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, if it helps for the ministry, then I'll, oh, wait, let's get cleaned up for the camera. Yeah. 
makes it better so that they can see Jesus, you know, I'm fine. Or, you know, like, uh, you know, whatever it may be. I just look at it as like, well, you know, it's necessary evil. <laughs> but me personally, hey, I'd rather sit around talking, eating, you know, and sharing Jesus 24-7. You know, and I just, I just love it. You know, I just... I'm just amazed at what he's done in my life. I'm amazed at how I feel about him. I'm amazed at how he is inside me. And I just can't wait till that comes on the outside. And then I see just the reality of what it's like to be, you know, like him, you know, being a son of God. And, you know, if I can be more like a son of God, I want to go there. Don't you? I mean, that's what I want to be is one of the sons of God. Of course, according to Jesus, we already are. Isn't that nice? He already took care of all of it. So what are we doing? Stressing. But I hope you get something out of this afterglow that's maybe just kind of, you know, talking and sharing a few thoughts, you know, and maybe the next afterglow will be better or worse, you know. And you can figure out for yourself whether it's interesting or not, you know, and either, you know, check it out and maybe get an insight or maybe just go, what in the world was that? And, you know, I just take it from there. But if there's anything I could ever share with you that's real, is just don't be settled for less when it comes to God. Always go after more, no matter what it is, whether it's understanding something from a scripture, whether it's an exaggeration somebody makes, and then, you, you know, but the Bible says it's true. Is that like, you know, hearing God's voice? I'm not exaggerating. You can hear God speak. So go after more. Don't just hear God speak. Hear God speak regularly. Hear God speak all the time. Hear God speak nonstop. Um, walking into heaven. You know, don't think that's not a physical capability that you can have. It's something you can do. Yeah, seriously. And always settle for more. Always be expecting more. Always want more. Always desire more. And God likes that. Because then you raise the bar and he lifts you up higher. Because then he brings you up out of the muck and the yuck that you're in. And then once you begin to get above like kind of like mountain climbing once you get above the smog then you see how beautiful the countryside is and i got news for you you haven't met heaven yet you haven't been there and once you see it you'll never want to be here again once you've experienced wow well, the best way to say is holiness but i always think of it like wholeness or completeness once you've experienced being complete You'll never want to be less than what complete is again. You'll want to be full of God. Instead of full of what you're full of. <laughs> and you know better than I do what that is. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you'll take the time to now talk to God about it. Because it was 